It was apparent to U.S. military planners by 1954 that the Soviet Union had the capability to catch and perhaps surpass the United States in an arms race that had begun in 1949 when Russia detonated its first atomic bomb. By the early 50s, they'd perfected the even more fearsome hydrogen bomb. In order to keep tabs on Soviet military capability, the CIA needed a bird's eye view of that country. The answer was a high altitude spy plane. It was designated the U-2 and proven by test pilots based at Area 51, 150 miles north of Las Vegas. The plane became the backbone of U.S. global surveillance in the late 1950s. Thought to fly too high for Soviet anti-aircraft fire, nonetheless, a U-2 was shot down over the Soviet Union in 1960, an incident that brought the reality of peacetime espionage out of the shadows and into the public light. But the spy plane program did not suffer. Americans seem to live comfortably with the idea that what serves the national security in a nuclear age is justifiable. And a new round of spy plane development took off at Area 51. In the 1960s, the SR-71 Blackbird became the state-of-the-art tool for watching the country's enemies from on high. It was amazingly detailed high-altitude photographs using optical equipment field tested at Area 51 that alerted the Kennedy administration in 1962 to the deployment of Russian missiles in Cuba. The photographs gave President Kennedy incontrovertible evidence of a Soviet attempt to gain a foothold in the Western Hemisphere and left no doubt in the minds of world leaders that it was the Soviets who were the aggressors. If the U.S. had faced embarrassment when the U-2 was shot down in 1960, the role of spy planes in America's peacetime arsenal was vindicated when the Soviets withdrew their missiles, ending the Cuban Missile Crisis. Numerous other variations of spy planes, photographic equipment, and atmospheric analyzers able to detect nuclear particles were developed in the 1960s and 1970s at Area 51. As verifiability became the focus of treaties that have limited or aimed to limit nuclear weapons testing. What is going on today at Area 51 is classified. The Pentagon will not discuss current projects even in the most general terms. There is no question, though, that Area 51 continues to be a prime research and development site for the most sophisticated systems. Residents in the small communities of Lincoln County say there are more workers in and out of Area 51 every day. And the Air Force has been ever so quietly trying for congressional approval of additional land next to Area 51. Access to the formerly public land became restricted in recent months. Tomorrow, more on what is being done at the top secret Southern Nevada testing facility in part two of Area 51, the 30 year secret. Richard Urey, Eyewitness News 8. The test range that gave birth to high altitude reconnaissance planes over the past three decades is again pregnant with the most sophisticated military systems. State Highway 375 cuts across south central Nevada, about 150 miles north of Las Vegas. From the road can be seen the groomed mountains and the jumbled hills which obscure the Groom Dry Lake bed, the heart of Area 51, perfect topography for the nation's most secret proving ground. High-level civilian sources speculate on a number of projects that may be underway at Area 51. Most prominently mentioned is research and development of aircraft technology capable of neutralizing radar beams. The Pentagon will not release photographs of planes utilizing the so-called stealth technology. But the consensus of aviation experts is that when it becomes operational, before the end of the decade, it will look something like the flying wing developed 35 years ago, at least in the bomber configuration. Stealth technology, often thought to be earmarked for the new bomber, can be used on almost any type of plane. The key is that radar reflecting metal is not used in construction. Stealth planes will be made of the type of material that goes into fishing rods and tennis rackets, a super strong carbon epoxy. Engines would be made of metal, but would be shielded with radar-resistant synthetic and aluminum mesh. It sounds rather elementary, but details of the research are among the most protected military secrets. Lockheed Corporation has been a prime contractor for stealth, the same company that developed high-altitude reconnaissance planes at Area 51. Other projects may include work on new optical guidance systems that will provide precision accuracy for missiles fired from U.S. warplanes, accuracy to be essential if a ground war ever erupted in Europe, where friendly and hostile troops could be fighting at close range. Area 51 is also thought to deploy Soviet MiG fighters for test purposes. It's speculated that the latest U.S. electronic technology may be added to the MiGs to test their capabilities if equipped with state-of-the-art gear. Lieutenant General Robert Bond may have taken off in a MiG from Area 51 for a flight that ended in a fatal crash in the adjacent Nevada test site last April. Because of Area 51's near total seclusion, it reportedly was the training site for U.S. commandos who unsuccessfully tried to free U.S. hostages in Iran in 1980. 
While facts about Area 51 programs cannot be confirmed through the military, the townsfolk in Alamo, the nearest community, say they've seen an influx of newcomers who work at Area 51. It's a fine line that Lincoln County residents must walk when dealing with the Air Force. They recognize the military spending can be a substantial boost to the local economy. They also know the military can be a threat to more traditional revenue sources. Especially upsetting is what many are calling a land grab next to Area 51. When we found this out, it extremely upset us. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, uh, we couldn't believe that we were going to be handled that way. More of Area 51, the 30-year secret tomorrow. Richard Urey, Eyewitness News 8. This is where the Air Force has drawn the line. Beyond here lies 89,000 acres of land that has become a buffer zone for the top secret proving ground known as Area 51. The road that goes from the main highway to the Groom Mountains was built by the efforts of Lincoln County workers and the owners of the Groom Mine, the Sheehan family. Pat and Bob Sheehan work part-time on the claim that's been in the family since before the turn of the century. And find that guard shack blocking our access, it was unreal. The, the feelings that I had were, 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 were so violent that uh, I couldn't relay how I felt, really. It, it was that bad. It would be like coming home to your house and having a guard shack on your driveway. The Sheehans say the Air Force did not notify them of plans to expand the military reservation to include their property. It was that lack of consideration that prompted them to speak out for the first time against military policy. Although they're no strangers to hardship, they attribute to weapons development over the years, dating back to World War II. What we put up with strafing for all the way through the war with 50 caliber machine gun bullets. And I mean, it was bad. If one of them had hit one of us, it would have killed us. Later, the Sheehans built and operated an ore milling plant. In 1953, the plant was blown apart. An explosives expert said it was hit by a missile. Which we, we hold the Air Force responsible for. And in, in our mind, they destroyed it. This is Bob Sheehan with his mother and father 30 years ago, silhouetted by the flash of an atomic bomb 15 miles away. Bob says he suffered scarred arms from fallout. They wonder if their mother's cancer was caused by it. But it wasn't until the military's unannounced plan to seal off the Groon Mountains surfaced several months ago that they demanded compensation. We as Americans don't want to do anything to those people that are going to jeopardize the national security. And that's not why we have made noise. We were put into a corner by <clears throat> those people where we had to do something or, or lose our interest entirely. Groom Mountain's rancher Steve Midlin is also dealing with the government. They say that, that it's never going to make no difference, and I'd like to see something in writing that, for that saying that, but I haven't got it yet. Lincoln County Commissioner Rick Hardy cautions. There's a general distrust out here for uh, Air Force, and that's probably our biggest concern in the county government is uh, there's, there's nobody talking to us. But growing public attention may be helping to change that. More on that tomorrow in part four of Area 51, the 30 Years secret. Richard Urey, Eyewitness News 8. Area 51 is adjacent to the north end of the Nevada test site. The proposed Air Force expansion, already patrolled by armed guards prior to any congressional authorization, takes in the Groom Mountain Range north of Area 51. Air Force officials refuse to say if the expansion will merely serve as a security buffer or as a test area. It was only in recent months that the land acquisition proposal surfaced to public view. The acreage had been tacked onto the Air Force land lease renewal several years ago and filed with the Interior Department in Washington, little more than a surveyor's notation. The Bureau of Land Management has jurisdiction over the territory, but it wasn't until about a year ago that the district manager for the BLM in Las Vegas was informed of the Air Force plan. Uh, they're, they're not always going to tell you the rationale. Uh, they tend to hold that at higher levels where they can keep a better handle on it. And I, that's, That was the reason I wasn't surprised, uh, because of the, you know, the filing of the application for additional land didn't come to this office. Ranchers and miners using the land next to Area 51 became alarmed about possibly losing their investments. Others began to worry about the loss of recreational opportunities. Nowhere else in the region is there the variety of wildlife, vegetation, and natural springs. Nevada Department of Wildlife, the Wildlife Federation, the Sierra Club, Greenpeace, and Citizens Alert are among the groups who want the Defense Department to provide funding to purchase private lands that could offset the loss. 
Many see the Area 51 issue as a test case, anticipating other military land withdrawals near Fallon, Churchill, Ely, and Elko. And unless they follow uh, uh, congressionally established procedures, why, uh, they could just run roughshod over uh, the uh, uh, citizens and the state. Representative Harry Reid is preparing for House Interior Subcommittee hearings next month to be chaired by Representative John Cyberling. What we're concerned about is not what's going on in the area. We know that it's all super, super secretive. But what we're concerned about is Nevada has so few areas where you can have chucker and quail and wildlife, and this is one of them. What do we get in return? And John Cyberling is also interested in that, and that's going to be part of the direction of the hearing he's going to hold. Reed inspected Area 51 last week to confirm the briefings had been given on top secret programs to be sure the land withdrawal was justified. He came away satisfied that it is, but will say nothing about what's going on there. I also don't think that it's uh, proper when we're involved in a life and death struggle with the Soviet Union and maybe other people in the world to make everything that we do public. Reed is confident that congressional oversight committees that monitor top secret programs like Area 51 are effective in balancing public rights and the Pentagon's need for secrecy. Richard Urey, Eyewitness News 8.